Okay, today I'm going to be showing you a retro virtual machine. So I last covered this probably around 2023 and of course I've had a lot of new subscribers since those days and the original video is well hidden away. So just like any other system or software which we can emulate games on, this one is no exception and it's had plenty of updates since I last covered it. So what is retro virtual machine then? So we can play 8-bit systems on this, ZX Spectrum games, Master System games, but we're going to go into that and I'm going to show you how to actually set this up and where to get it from. So we're going to go over to the website for this system and here we go, retrovirtualmachine.org. And as it says just here, ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, MSX1, that's Sega SG-1000, the Sega Master System. Now as it stands, this is available for Windows, Mac, OS and Linux. And we've also got the Raspberry Pi added too as of this latest release which is 2.1.20 so what we're going to do is do this video for of course windows which is what i'm using here now we got documentation just here but instead of going through all that i'll let you read that yourselves so what we're going to do though is actually go to the download section now as we can see just here dependent on the operating system you're running just download the package of your choice but of course we're going to go for the windows times 64 version just here okay so once once you downloaded it and obviously providing you're using Windows, we've got a zip folder just here. All we need to do is just drag out that one file, retrovirtualmachine.exe. And that's it, very simple. And of course, we can now delete the zip folder. What we're going to do is open up this for the first time. More info, and we're going to go to run anyway. So we got a nice little presentation just as the system boots up. And here we go. So of course we can maximize this screen. What we're gonna do then is just head over to the bars on the top left hand side here to open up the menu. And from here, what we can do is actually go down to firmware vault. And there's particular systems within Retro Virtual Machine which is going to require BIOS. So as we can see, MSX1, we're going to need a BIOS for that, but I'm going to show you how to actually install that in a second. We also got ClearCovision just here, which again needs a BIOS file. And for ZX Spectrum, it requires free BIOS files, but it also says optional. So we don't necessarily need these BIOS files for the ZX Spectrum multiface. We can actually play Spectrum games without it pretty much so let's just go through actually setting up the BIOS file first of all for the MSX1 so all we're gonna do is just go down to explore and that's gonna open up a little window here so I'm gonna navigate to where my BIOS file for MSX is which is on my desktop and I've got it in my MSX folder and this is the BIOS file that we're gonna use for this and as we can see just there, it now says installed. So it's actually saying we need a second BIOS file for MSX, but I'm not going to bother with that one, as this one works just fine for what I've tested so far. So once we've done that, we're just going to go down to OK. And now we need to set up a machine itself, a virtual machine as it were. So we're going to go back up to those bars again. And we're simply going to go down to create machine. And now once this drops down, we can now set up a particular machine. So I'm going to start off with ZX Spectrum. And if I then go to next, we then got a variety of different Spectrum models. So I'm going to go for the ZX Spectrum plus 2A slash plus 3. And here we go. Now, let me just remind you, if you're not too familiar with these particular type of old computers, it's actually going to show us a little picture of these models too, which is pretty funky. Okay, so we're going to go to next. And now we can be more specific by which type of ROM file we want with the Spectrum. I'm going to go for the ZX Spectrum Plus 2E. And here we go, we're going to go to create. And now I need to give this a save file, so I'm going to call this ZX Spectrum. And I'm going to save that file to my desktop. Okay, so as we can now see, we've actually got the ZX Spectrum set up. All I need to do to start using this is just left click on it. And this is going to bring up a TV. So we're going to expand this. Now, the good thing about Retro Virtual Machine is we can actually change how the TV looks. If I left click on the television logo at the top or icon, we can go to presets and start manipulating how that screen looks. But what I'm going to do is actually turn the TV on first. If I go up to the little power icon at the top, 
and here we go so we've now got the spectrum powered up and if i go to presets again let's just go down to black and white so there we go that changes to black and white as requested we can also give our Amstrad green monochrome look, but that's not really my cup of tea. So what we're going to do is just leave it to the default of CRT curved, which to me is the best. We can also do different things here with overscan. So if we change overscan size, as you can see, we can zoom in and out. And we've got complete control over the presentation of how the games come across. But I'll go into that in a second. So I'm going to OK it for now. And what we're going to do is actually load a game. So if I go to the cassette logo at the top, this is going to bring up the cassette recorder. I need to eject it. And this is then, of course, going to open up the ability to start playing some games or inserting some tapes into the virtual cassette drive. So I'm going to look for a ZX Spectrum game, and this is going to be a tap file. Now, what I'm going to do is load up one of the latest ZX Spectrum games, which is the very awesome Rebearded Fantasy. So if I just double left click on this dot tap image, as we can see, the cassette recorder now has the tape inserted, complete with the print on there too, which looks pretty damn good. From using my cursor on my keyboard, I can actually now start switching between loader, plus three, basic, and so on. I'm going to select loader, and as it says on the screen, insert tape and press play. Now, what I'm going to do is press play, but before I do this, I'm going to warn you, this emulates the sound of the spectrum, so it's not going to be pleasant hearing for some people. So as we can see just there, it loads just like a real ZX Spectrum, it certainly sounds like a real ZX Spectrum too. Now you would have just noticed on the top right hand side a little window popped up, and that's just to say that my Xbox controller is now connected through Bluetooth, and I've obviously connected to this game through using the Kempston method. Now, a really good thing which I was talking about very briefly just now is that we can actually manipulate how this screen looks. So, what I'm going to do is go back up to that TV logo or icon at the top just there. And now we've got the actual game playing. We can actually take a look at some of these settings. So, if I go to scan lines and drag this up, as well as mask, we can see that the screen is now looking more like a CRT TV. And if I go to presets, Okay, so we're going to close down the ZX Spectrum and what we're going to do next then is actually create a new system. So to do this, we're going to just go to the top left hand side and we're going to go to main window and from here, we're then going to go down to create machine. So again, we're going to set one up and this time we're going to go for Sega. So we're going to select Sega, simply go to next. And for this, we're going to set up the master system. So we're going to go to next again. And just here, we got a range of different systems to use. Now we got master system NTSC. And there's one here saying master system plus FM. So FM is the enhanced sound unit, which some master system users would have back in the day. But I'm going to just go for a standard master system to power. As I am in the power region, we're going to go to create. So we're going to give this one a save file of master and if I save that to my desktop and here we go so we can now see we got the master system 2 which is a European setup and here we go so same again what we're going to do is just go to the cartridge at the top and we're going to insert a cartridge into the master system just like you would a real master system if we go to insert now on my desktop I got MS folder and inside of here I got a shinobi game 
So the cartridge is inserted, all we need to do next is just power it on. And here we go. Now the same deal, if we go up to the TV logo, or icon, I keep saying logo, we can then go to presets and we can change how it looks. So really this is a matter of taking your time to get yourself the perfect picture. And there we go, it really is that simple. So what we're gonna do is look at this little speaker icon. So from here we can adjust different sound settings per system if that's your type of thing and you really wanna get technical with Retro Virtual Machine. But for now what we're going to do is set up another machine. We're gonna to go to main window and this time we're gonna set up the Amstrad. So Amstrad CPC, next. And this time we're actually going to set up the GX4000. So for those unfamiliar with the GX4000, Amstrad system that is, it was pretty much a failed attempt to enter in the console market. It didn't really take off. So we're gonna create this and we're gonna call this one Amstrad and that should be fine. Save, and here we go. So same deal, we need to insert the cartridge. So if I just hover over the cartridge port just here, we're gonna go to other ROM. And I've got a GX4000 folder on my desktop. And I've got Robocop2.bin. So cartridge inserted, and of course we need to turn the TV on. And good lord is this Robocop game very hard. Okay, so if you remember earlier on in this video, I actually installed a BIOS file and that was for the MSX. So I'm gonna go back to main window and take a look at MSX. So again, just a simple case of creating machine. And this time around, we're gonna go for MSX. Next, and MSX1. And we're gonna to select Toshiba because at this point, this is the only model of the MSX that Retro Virtual Machine caters for. Okay, so we've got a couple of different variations of the Toshiba. Um, I'm gonna go for PAL and create. Now I need to obviously save this, so I'm gonna type MSXX and save. 
and here we go so again just like the sega master system i got a euro version just here okay so on this system if i left click on the cassette icon i get the tape player come up where we can insert a game just like i did on the spectrum or in this case i'm going to actually use the cartridge so what i'm going to do is just click on the cartridge and if i go to the cartridge slot on the msx I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to look for my MSX game, which is a 2020 game. Okay, so whilst I think of it, we've actually got some more icons at the top just here. So we got a little D-pad just here. And if we left click on this one, this goes for all systems which Retro Virtual Machine caters for. We can actually toggle between joystick emulation ports. And of course, some microcomputers demanded your joystick being in, say, port 2. So we can easily do that as well as disable and actually use a keyboard to start playing the games. We've also got this little refresh button just here and this resets every machine so what you're seeing just here is going to work with say the zx spectrum 2 it's not exclusive just for the msx if i go to main window and i open up spectrum again it's going to happen here as well so if i just left click on the d-pad as we can see we can toggle between joystick ports just here and the same goes with the sound, so every system comes with the sound option of having the beeper for example, or the output noise, or the low pass filter, so plenty of options just there. And that's it for Retro Virtual Machine. Like I said at the start of the video, I've not actually covered this system for the last couple of years, and I truly think it needs a bit more recognition than what it actually gets. It truly is a fantastic way to emulate your games, especially if you're nostalgic for the proper load times of, say, Spectrum or Amstrad games. As you've seen in the video, the ZX Spectrum game, I had to actually speed up the video because that's a 10 minute load time. But for those of you out there who love that type of thing then without a doubt retro virtual machine will give you all that nostalgia anyways if you like today's video hit notification subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content as well as retro game reviews which i also do on this channel anyways again thanks for watching and until next time stay retro